Hello, it's me, and I'm going to address a couple more viewer questions which I thought to be particularly valuable in terms of explaining some concepts. Uh, you know, I've been going over more and more the matter of how solves are done. Uh, so uh, I think that this next question really kind of gets to the core of some of uh, the techniques of how the algorithms or commutators are found as opposed to just showing it to you. So speaking of which, uh, a viewer by the name of Austin White says, Help! I saw your tutorial on 3x4x5 and it got me all the way to the parity parts, but I don't understand how the parity al works. I didn't send a pic because I don't have a specific situation. What I need to know is what the parity al does because it is so far confusing to me. Uh, can you please help me understand the parities? Thank you. Well, Austin, no problem. And you're right, we should kind of delve into more where that came from. So just to give a little bit of background, uh, this refers to the brick parity uh, that I talked about in, in the past, which of course refers to what a brick is. Well, a brick is basically this kind of a puzzle. Uh, this is a two by three by four. His question was on the three by four by five. Um, you've also, we've also got the four by five by six and the five by six by seven over here. Now they're all bricks. They all have the same form where you've uh, basically got two sides that are the same parity, so to speak, which means they have the same oddness or evenness of layers, and then you have one side that's different. So in the two by three by four, you've got the two and the four, which is the same parity, which means they're both um, even, and then you've got one odd. Same thing here, you've got two odds and one even, four by five by six, two uh, evens and one odd coming down here, and a five by six by seven, one, two, three, four, five, which is once again, two odds and an even, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the movement is very similar with them. And the way that these are solved is based on the concept that behind every brick, there is a domino that is based on the same motion. So that's what's meant by what a brick is. Is it something that contains um, two different parities on the same puzzle? By parity, I mean oddness or evenness, and uh, it has uh, similar movements like that. The difference between that is a two by three by three, uh, a two by three by four rather, is basically reduced to a two by two by three. This, just like the two by three by four, has two different parities. It's got evenness over here and oddness over here. Evenness on this whole slice here and oddness on this whole slice. The difference is that with a domino, the um, two parities that are the same are the same um, number of layers. So two by two by three. With a brick, although the parity is the same, the layers are different. So two and four are obviously different layers, but the parity is the same. So the structure is the same, which means that the movement of a brick is the same as the movement of a, um, of a domino because you can't move a 90 degree turn from one parity into another and then complete another 90 degree turn at right angles to that. So too with this, I can't turn a two into a three and complete that. So in order to do that, I have to do 180 degree turns in order to complete and uh, uh, keep going with the, with the motion here. Same thing with this. So we can continue to draw the comparisons that the movement of a 2x3x4 is really the same as a 2x2x3, its brick um, counterpart. The puzzle in question, and the one that I'm going to be focusing on, really the 3x4x5, is based on the same type of organization as a 3x3x4. The only difference is that, just like this, you have two parities in one, and that's really what a cuboid is, is you have more than one parity within the same puzzle. Again, a parity just refers to oddness or evenness. But the brick has two different layers that has the same parity. So this is a three by three by four, so you've got the same parity and the same number of layers across this uh, uh, layer here, across this side here. Here you've got the same parity, but different number of layers. So because of that, you've got an extra piece here. You've got an extra layer thrown into here, and that's where the trouble brews. Uh, so two with the uh, 4x5x6, by by that's based on a 4x4x6. Four by four by Again, same parity, different number of layers, same parity, same number of layers. So you've got this extra layer over here, and of course, Gregor Fenning and Puzzle Maestro's 5x6x7. Five by by same number, same parity over here, uh, in terms of being odd, while you're even down here. This is based on, uh, this is uh, Tanner Frisbee's 5x5x6. Five by five by so 
five by six by seven and five by five by six. And once again, it's really the same kind of movement with this where I can move down here, but I can't make another movement over here at right angles. So two, I can move this down, but I can't do that. I have to complete my 180 degree turn in order to continue um, to move this puzzle. So 90 degrees here, and I can move this across here. This is a big guy. And then I can continue the process of scrambling and solving and having a grand old time. Okay, so that's just to review what I mean by a brick. A brick, like a domino, has two different parities on the same puzzle, and the motion is just like its domino counterpart. The only difference is there's an extra layer here. So the solve of a brick is basically the reduction to a domino. When you reduce it to a domino, you then try to solve it as a domino. However, because of the extra layers hanging out here, you may find yourself in a situation where you can't solve it as a domino. You go as far as you can, but these extra layers here are out, and they can't be solved. So because you reduced it to a brick, rather to a, an, a domino, and try to solve it as such, because you can't solve it as that, you end up with what I call the brick parity. In other words, it's not an oddness evenness parity, it's a cuboid kind of a parity, where you went from one kind of a cuboid to another and find that you're, you're stopped. Uh, you're stopped. Just like you can't, uh, just like a four by four parity is when you try to solve it as a three by three, you can't, you're stopped because of a, a pattern of movements that you can't do. So then you have to kind of go back into your reduction. So too, you reach a point at which you're solving this and scrambling this and moving this just like a uh, three by three by four, but you find that you're stopped and you can't solve it as a three by four by four as a domino. You then have to use specific brick moves and brick maneuvers in order to get that out. So that's what I mean by um, a brick parity. The process of reduction um, has failed and you have to do something about that. Okay, so now that we've explained what I mean by a brick and what I mean by a brick parity, how then did we figure out what to do about getting through it? Well, in order to get through any situation, quite simply, the um, parity uh, uh, solve, the brick parity algorithm, was really based upon all the concepts we've been talking about. It's really very simple and that has to do with a commutator. Once again, a commutator is a combination of uh, moves and reverse moves, followed by a middle move, and then a, uh, a reversal of the first part, and then a reversal of the middle move. So uh, the first part would be U-R-U-I-R-I. -I. That's two moves, and then reversing the two moves. Then you find the one piece that you can isolate from an area that's out, do your middle move, which is really exchanging that piece for another piece, and then reverse the first four sets of moves, um, and then bring it back in. So uh, I've given some examples with that. So an example of that, if I were to use this master face turning octahedron, is I'm going to start off, if I wanted to move some uh, pieces around, with two moves and undo the two moves, or just do the reverse of that. So I do something like R, U, R, I, U, I. And then I look around, see what's done, and I find that this piece here in this layer is isolated. That's what I mean by isolated. My middle move is quite simply moving the layer that is isolated to replace this one piece that got um, moved around with another piece. Because when I undo the move, this is the only one that's going to be affected, aside from the other piece that I'm going to replace it with. So I'll take this. So my middle move, so my first two was R, U, R, I, U, I. Now here's my middle move. I just move this into here. So this is going to cause a three cycle basically between this, this to here, and this to where this is going to be and this to here. So I move this up and now we can undo it. U R U I R I and now we undo the middle move here and you can see that we did the three cycle. So this is just another example in form of, of what that is. So if I keep doing that over and over again, I'll eventually three cycle this back. So that's what's meant by that. And, and that's really ultimately what I have to do in terms of designing how to deal with this layer over here. So what I would do first then is I'd say, well, what could I do, uh, what kind of moves can I do and undo in order to start my commutator? The problem is I can't do R, U, R, U, I or anything like that. Because the problem with a brick, because it has the form of a domino and it has two different parities, I simply can't do an R and a U. I can't do that. 
So I have to make my commutator a little bit more complex regarding the movement that's allowed. But I have to make sure that it's a movement that I can do and that I can undo. So instead of doing an R, I've got to do a 2R. So it actually has to take the form of what I would call my sliding U technique. A sliding U technique is how you can take a piece from here and move it down to here. So if I were to demonstrate that on this, the sliding U technique, so I'm going to take this, move it into this slot by doing a 2R, and then a UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U. So that did move this here, but it caused the three cycle with this. So that's a very simple kind of a commutator that you can do if you can't do a 90 degree move like this. Because this white one moved to here, this moved to here, and this moved to here. So to get it back, it's just a matter of repositioning this to here. R, U, I, 2 R. That's back. Okay, so this, this is back in. So instead of doing that, uh, I would have to do a new kind of commutator where instead of doing RU, RAUI, I just do a sliding U technique that takes something out and then puts it back in. Um, so I thought, okay, what I could do is I can do uh, U, 2R, UI, 2L. U, 2R, UI, 2L. So that's the form of the sliding U technique. Now the problem is I don't have any middle moves. I can't isolate. I can see that this went to here, this went to here, and this went to here, or something like that. Um, so I know what happened, but I can't isolate any middle moves. These guys are blocking any moves here and here. If I do a 2F though, a 2F, now I can move this middle move over here. So I look to see what's um, isolated, and everything here is in except this and this, so that's two. And the problem is, if I'm to do a clean commutator, this 2F is an extra move. So then I figured, okay, why don't I add the 2F to the beginning so that I can add, put the 2F at the end, so then I can maybe isolate the middle move. So we'll put the 2F back, and we'll just get this back here. I'm just reversing what I just did. Ultimately, that's what I'm going to be doing with the commutator. So I figure at the end of the commutator, I had to throw in a 2F, but it was a little asymmetric. A good commutator should have a degree of symmetry. So what I figured is, okay, let's do a 2F at the beginning. So my entire move and unmove, U, R, U, I, R, I, the equivalent to that in a domino form, or in this case a brick form, is we start off with a 2F, then we do U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L. We started with an F, so then we finish with a 2F. Now we take a look at this, and this looks a lot more malleable, and what we see is where can we identify a middle move? Well, this piece is isolated. Everything else is fine. Everything else is okay. So this here, this 2R, this is going to be my middle move of my commutator. So I figure, okay, it's the easiest thing in the world. Just go ahead, do a 2R with this. That's my middle move. And what this is going to do is now this piece here is going to come into where this slot was. So this piece here, which was here, this green and orange was here, is now here. But it's about to be replaced by this piece. So this is going to cause, by the end of this, I figured, it's going to cause a clean exchange between this piece and this piece, this piece and this piece, and this piece and this piece. So uh, that should be my three cycle. Here's my middle move. Now I just completely reverse what I just did with the first half of the move. That's going to be a 2F to start off with, then 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, and then 2F to cap it off. Now I undo my middle move, moving it here, that's my 2R, and bang, there it is. So there's that three cycle. And indeed, this went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. Um, these pieces here. So that's what came up with that. That's where that came from. This is truly just a commutator of exactly the same form, no different from this. So this didn't come out of the clear blue. This is simply a modification of the concept. Once you understand the concept of a commutator, then you can apply it to different puzzles. Sometimes you have to stretch a little bit. Like uh, when I did the uh, Megamorphinx, uh, the AI 
Mega Morphing's puzzles. Uh, I really had to stretch it a bit, but I kept the concept the same. So that's where that three cycle came from. And if I wanted to get this back, well, now that I know what the three cycles are, then I know I can move this to here. This had to go here. So I need to take this and move it back. And one more of this commutator should take it back. So let's do the commutator one more time with the understanding of exactly why I did what I did. So the first part is the first part of the commutator, doing a move and undoing it. 2F, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, oops, 2L. Then 2F, middle move, and then un undo it. 2F, L, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2F, undo my middle move, and this is what I did for the set, and that brought it back. So I hope that clarifies it, and it was, I thought, a very relevant question given a lot of the topics that I've been talking about. It was really just a commutator to get through and three-cycle this layer that was the excluded layer from a domino, but was what made the brick what a brick is. Now, just knowing that, that will allow you to do any of those things like with uh, with this puzzle over here. Because you have these two extra layers, you can get the brick parity here, and the form is exactly the same. 2F, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L, 2F. Here's my middle move. You see it's isolated, so that's a 2R, and I'll reverse it. 2F, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2F. And now we'll reverse the middle move, and there's the three cycle over here. The thing about it is you can do exactly the same thing here. Now, as you build the complexity, you're not going to get any brick parities in the middle layer, and you won't get any brick parities with any of the middle layers. These two constitute the middle layer, so you can only get that parity here. Over here, this is the middle layer, so you can get it in this layer and you can get it in this layer. So what you have to realize is it's the exact the same algorithm. By the way, there is a left-sided version, it's just the opposite, so I, I won't go through that right now. But you can start off with this as your U if it's up here. If it's down here, you can start off with this as your U and just follow suit. So you can get the brick parity here or here. For this one, these two constitute the middle layer. You can get it in this layer or this layer. Once again, this can be the U or this can be the U. Sometimes I get tripped up as I'm doing one versus another as to which layer. You just have to be careful that if I'm moving this one, U, and this is the 2F over here. So it doesn't matter how complex and how large your brick is. The parity algorithm is exactly the same. A lot of dust there. Um, so yeah, the parity algorithm is exactly the same, and that's where it came from. It came from an understanding of the structure of the puzzle, the way the puzzle moves, how to design a commutator, how to design the first part, how to design the second part, how I modified it, and that's where I came up with that. So hope that clarified that, and uh, keep those good questions coming. Thanks for watching.